Hey guys, it's Kevin from Subi Speed, and today we're talking all about autocross. So what exactly is autocross? Well, it's the safest, easiest, and least expensive way to try your hand at performance driving. A day of autocross usually ranges from $25 to $65, so it's not too expensive. It's basically a core setup of cones in a large parking lot, so there's not much to hit. And speeds are generally no faster than highway speeds, so you're not getting yourself into anything too crazy. Now you basically only need three things to get started autocrossing. The first thing being a valid driver's license. Unless you're younger, then you can have a parent or guardian sign off. The second and most important thing is a car that is in good working order, which means no loose suspension parts. The battery is secure. Your tires, brakes, and seat belts are in good shape. Your wheels are torqued down properly. There are no fluid leaks, and your interior is clean and free of any loose items. The third and final thing is a helmet. You need a Snell M or SA rated helmet of the current or two immediately preceding year ratings, which means in 2018, you can use a Snell rated 2015, 2010, or 2005 helmet. Once the year 2020 hits, the 2005 helmets are no longer accepted. Now, depending on the group you're running with, they may have loaner helmets available for you to use, but if you have a motorcycle helmet laying around, you may wanna check that to see if you can use your own helmet. Before we get too far into it, if this is your first time autocrossing, I've gotta say this is where you need to practice some restraint. You don't wanna go crazy all out modifying your car before you show up to your first event. Learn your car how it is, and then once you're comfortable, you can make modifications, and then you can see how they affect your car. The best mod is a driver mod, so spend some time behind your wheel, and you will be better for it. I guarantee you, if this is your first time autocrossing, you're gonna show up, and I don't care how fast your car is, there's gonna be a little Miata that's faster than you so leave your ego at home and don't get butt hurt and once you have those three things that you need to get started then you'll need to find a club that hosts autocrosses in your area whether it be SCCA, Porsche, BMW, NASA, whatever it is there are a lot of helpful people in these clubs with a wealth of knowledge that are more than willing to help newcomers have a fun and safe learning experience. Once you've found your local club, depending on your region, you may be able to register online before the event or sometimes you can show up and sign up for the event the day of. Once you've signed up, you'll want to pay attention to the schedule and show up early so that you have plenty of time to get through registration, tech inspection, and walk the course until you're able to draw it on the back of your hand so you don't get lost when you're out there. You also want to bring clothes that are appropriate for the weather as well as plenty of water and food since usually there is no lunch break. We've gone over everything you need to get started. You've registered, today's the day you show up, you've checked in, teched your car, walked the course so that you're comfortable, now what? Well, usually at the driver's meeting, they're gonna ask if there are any new drivers or novices, and this is your opportunity to get a mentor that will ride with you and help guide you through the course. Like I said earlier, leave your ego behind. We see this all the time with new autocross drivers where they come in and they think, oh, I don't need any help, I'll just go out and figure it out myself, and they go out on their first run and they end up getting lost, and they have to embarrassingly slowly drive around the course of the back of the line and they end up with a mentor anyway. So save yourself the embarrassment and raise your hand when they ask that question. I also recommend that you ride with your mentor and anybody else that you can so that you can get a good idea of how it feels to push your car to the limits because it's going to feel completely different than when you're out driving on the street. Now on your first run, you want to start off slow since you're still figuring out the course and then you can gradually add more speed as you get more comfortable. You don't want to go balls to the wall on your first run because you're going to end up overdriving and you're going to get real sloppy. That being said, it's okay to hit cones when you're out there driving hard and competing. Yes, you're gonna get that two second penalty, but you're gonna be able to get that clean run in once you smooth everything out. Once you've got some experience under your belt and you're comfortable with your car, how it is, that's when you should start thinking about making some changes to your car to improve your times. So we're gonna walk around our car here and I'm gonna show you what to focus on to improve your times around the course and improve your drivability. I know I said I was gonna go around the WRX, but this thing was already on the lift, so forget I said that. 
First thing I recommend besides the driver's mod is a new set of performance summer tires. Now, you don't need to go all out and get yourself a set of racing slicks, but there are a ton of different options that are gonna give you way more grip than your stock tires. If you wanna take it one step further, you can purchase wider wheels like the 18 by nine and a half plus 38 fitment wheels that we recommend. So you can fit a 255 or 265 tire on there to give you even more grip. After you upgraded your tires, the next thing you wanna look at is your brake system. There's different components that you can upgrade, starting with your brake pads that will give you more stopping power. Then you can pair that up with aftermarket rotors and stainless steel brake lines to give you better brake pedal feel. And then eventually you can upgrade to a big brake kit, which will give you the most stopping power. Once you've got those two bases covered, you can start looking into modifying your suspension system with either springs or a whole coilover system, which will give you full ride height adjustability as well as damping adjustment. Then you've got lower control arms and camera plates, which will help fine tune your camera adjustment to give you more traction under hard cornering. There's also different sway bars and strut bars that will help stiffen your chassis and reduce roll. Those are basically the three big modification categories to improve your autocross times. There's also some smaller modifications to improve the drivability of the car during the autocross, like a brake master cylinder brace, which will help improve brake pedal feel, as well as stainless steel brake lines that I mentioned before. And then you have a CG lock, which helps tighten your seat belt in place so you're not sliding around since most of you guys don't have racing harnesses. Another big modification are aftermarket seats, which help keep you in place so you're not sliding around in your stock seats under hard cornering but that's a bigger modification that you probably aren't going to get into unless you get serious about autocrossing or tracking your car oh also forgot we now have available helmets on our website so if you don't have a helmet like i said earlier a motorcycle helmet or a snell rated helmet head on to our website and check those out that being said i've got to double check this car to make sure everything's good to go and hopefully we go out and have a good time this weekend but until then i'll see you guys next time